We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. So, uh, whatever I do, let, uh, let's get started. So, uh, first I'd like to introduce my team to uh, introduce themselves to you. So, first we'll have Jason. Jason, please. Uh, hi guys, I'm Jason and I'm uh, one of the hosts today as well. I'm Ian, just a little bit, uh, guiding you guys through the discussion today. And me and Justin really hope that you guys could take something away. From, uh, you really know about how to you just feel about this uh, particular topic. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm him and uh, I'm today's presenter and I hope you guys enjoy today's presentation. Hi, I'm Anthony, also one of the presenters today, and uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hazel, and I'm also the presenter of today. Hi, I am Ethel. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Sebastian. Right, so uh, let's give you guys a brief introduction of ourselves. We are actually representing a team called uh, I think it's a professor from the Chinese YMC of Hong Kong. So uh, I think you guys might not know much about this uh, team or what particular we you have been doing in the past years. So uh, in the coming few minutes, we will be playing a clip introducing our team to you guys and hopefully you can learn more about us. So basically, we are established since 2015, and in past few years, we have been uh, we have been organizing competitions to promote digital inclusion. So uh, the teenagers who join our competition will have to deliver a service to a particular target group in order to uh, teach them uh, some uh, technology uh, things, like tech teaching the elderly to use VR uh, goggles, as you just seen in the video. 
And uh, yeah, so hopefully now you'll have more information about what we are and what we do. And uh, for me personally, I was uh, I was the awardee from uh, 2019 and have represented the uh, the Chinese YMCA of Hong Kong and joined the Berlin IGF in 2019. And while well, uh, Jason, he joined the Geneva IGF in 2017. So uh, hopefully today we'll uh, bring you guys some more insight about uh, the technological assistance. So uh, let's get back to the topic of the day. Technological assistance that applies to teenagers. So uh, this is actually a very common uh, situation happening probably in quite a lot of countries, particularly in Hong Kong, in our hometown. And uh, some may argue that uh, this is not really a fair way to uh, distribute such resources. So uh, in the coming hour, we will be having more discussion about this and uh, hopefully we can uh, give, make some conclusion on how uh, the government should uh, deliver the resources. Uh, so first, let's get started by a presentation from him, uh, Anthony and Payson, and they'll present more data about uh, some countries, uh, the, uh, how they distribute the resources to teenagers or and elders. So may I now pass the time to Payson. So today we are going to talk about the technological support distributed to different stakeholders by the government of great economic territories, including Hong Kong, Singapore, and the United Kingdom. So now let's start with Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, subsidies are given by the government to poor families and for them to purchase electronic devices such as iPad and computers in order to fulfill the need of students to participate in e-learning. This scheme was started in 2010. However, we can see that there are still about 10% of elementary school and high school students unable to buy electronic devices in 2019. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic spread around the earth in early 2020. Face-to-face -face lessons are suspended in Hong Kong, replaced by online lessons with Zoom and Google Meet. In these circumstances, digital devices are crucial for every student to attend lessons. The COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the development of e-learning. The Hong Kong government has set aside about two billion to launch a three-year program starting in the 2021 school year. School could apply for funding to purchase mobile computer devices to needy students and provide portable Wi-Fi router and mobile data card to students who do not have access to appropriate internet service due to their living environment. Regarding to the aspect of elderly, the government do not give much direct support to Hong Kong elderly. Instead, the government provides funding to NGOs for them to hold outreach programs to teach the elderly using tablet and other mobile devices. To gain a better understanding from the elderly's perspective, we organized an interview a few weeks ago. Our interviewee, Vicky Yo, age 81, has been using mobile phones for various, various uses during the pandemic. In the video, Vicky will share her story of exploring the world of the internet, express her view to the government and the NGOs to which they have support, been supported, and further gives a few suggestions on how they can improve their assistance given to them. The subtitles will be in English, so let's just enjoy the video now. I 
初初呢，我就乜都唔識嘅，咁我依家呢，就學熟咗呢，誒、呃，即係屋識又識啦，微信又識啦，上書又識啦，咁啊好多嘢我都識咗，咁啦，用呢，用咩程度呢？我就誒睇下屋識啦，誒、呃、同啲朋友微信啊傾下偈啦，誒、呃、或者係視頻啊傾下偈，同啲遠嘅仔女呢。唔喺身邊啲仔女咧，視頻嚟傾下偈啦，咁啊。誒、呃、學習之前咧，即係疫情嗰一段時間咧，就上唔到中心。咁中心有活動咧，我哋咧就用電話、用蘇嚟上堂啦。咁有啲婆婆咧，就我智能手機咧，就喺屋屋企咧，就一日咧就對住小幅牆咁咯。睇下電視啊，睇電視又瞓覺咁咯。咁我哋有智能手機咧，就方便好多。咁有啲長者就話：，誒、哎、買手機啊，誒、哎、我都冇幾中意啊。有啲啊，你有手機又點啊？有啲又打佢啲電話嚟啲騙案，我又驚嗰啲人騙啦、啊，又唔識得嗰啲人又打電話嚟啊。誒、哎、銀行又叫借錢，咁啊攬教嗰啲嘢，誒、哎、我都費事買啊咁。但係咧，你用手機咧，有時咧就真係都睇唔到咁多。點咧？有時咧就開手機啊，都有啲卡嘅，就開唔到嘅。有時咧開又開到喎，有時又開又開又開唔到啊！真係有時都係咁嘅現象嘅。咁你時咩睇睇下，好快又走咗，誒、哎、又要重新開過，真係咁咯，真係都有啲困難嘅。嗯即係初初嘅時咧，政府咧都冇講話，你啲長者咧買個手機接觸多啲咧，我哋、呃、政府咧有咩宣傳？咁樣政府咧以前咧都冇講嘅，近來咧唔知係邊個講我又唔記得啦。佢就咁講，佢話長者咧都應該買翻個手平平啲，買翻個智能手機。搞翻個安心出行就咁咯。最近咧有一個唔知係邊個唔記得唔得啦，喺電視講咁啊。誒、呃，我希望政府咧多啲俾啲資源我哋長者，誒、呃，即、就、係、是、多啲資源咧，使到我哋長者咧認識嘅新科技。同埋呢，即係接受多啲新科技知識，俾我哋長者咁咯。誒、呃，可唔可以資助啲長者呢？誒、呃，買智能手機呢？我希望咁嘅咋。誒<笑>、呃，上堂學咯，政府多啲派啲咁單張啊，誒、呃、或者係派啲人誒誒、呃、教啲長者識得多啲嗰啲。In this video, we can see that elderly usually use phones to chat with friends and grandchildren using WhatsApp or WeChat. They will also use the phone to watch YouTube for entertainment. However, some friends of the interviewees do not want to buy mobile phones. Since they are afraid of phone scams and some advertising calls, they found difficulties in using mobile phones too. It shows that they are still concerned for elderly to use digital devices in Hong Kong. At, la at the last part of the interview, the interviewees want the government to, uh, to allocate more resources for elderly to teach them more about mobile phones. So now I will pass the money. So now I'll pass the floor to him to talk about the situation in Singapore. Thank you, Hayson. To start with, let's talk about the support provided to the youngsters by the Singapore government first. The Singapore government has planned to help students to participate in the online learning by equipping its students with a self-learning device. The education expenditure has obtained the total government expenditure for 15.9 percent, approximately 582 million Singapore dollars. 
and some of it was used in the technology assistance provided for students financially or mentally. Take 2020 as an example. 3,300 laptops have been provided to uh, elementary students from low-income families that didn't have digital device with other support. On the other hand, Singapore government has also provided a support to elderly people. Since COVID-19, the restriction measures were particularly strict for the elderly, as it shuts frequently visit public areas like community centers, markets, and hawker centers. These restrictions have greatly affected the daily lives of elderly who are not used to use the new technology. Technology. In order to give support to the affected communities, in other words, those elderly, training is, is provided. Singapore, uh, uh, the Singapore Infocom Media Development Authority has launched the Senior Go Digital Program. As the COVID-19 restrictions reduce residents' movement, the training starts with communication skills like video calls, connecting to Wi-Fi and basic cybersecurity tips. The progress to learn to log into the government service with the same past digital identity too, paying pay with QR codes at markets and ordering groceries online. These uh, programs have gave uh, the seniors in Singapore an opportunity to enjoy those new facilities and technology provided by the government. To conclude a little, the Singapore government provided uh, support to both youngsters and elderly people to hope and hope to bridge the gap between students and the elderly of the internet burden caused by the pandemic. However, as we can't really determine in Hong Kong if the program is uh, effective and good enough, we can't uh, comment much on them. Now I would like to pass the floor to Anthony. Anthony, please. Thank you, Kim. So, turning our attention to the United Kingdom, the UK, the UK government has spent a total of £842 million pounds on education for the 2019 and 2020 fiscal year. And so, according to the Education Technology Survey 2020-2021, done by the Department of Education, the, 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 the British government has spent an average of £6,000 and £5,200 on secondary and primary students respectively, on education and technology. The government has also invested a total of 20, oh, excuse me, 200 million pounds on STEM related careers. And the policies on education and technology includes the purchase of equipment such as routers and devices, phones and, including phones and tablets, and also some financial support such as a number of funding schemes, waiving data charges, and also the local support. And also for elderly, a survey from the government suggested that despite the internet, the internet, yes, thank you. And so for so for elderly, the government has, the, a survey from the government has suggested that despite the internet habit remaining roughly the same for them, there's actually a significant number of elderly respondents that reflected that they have used the internet more than before. And one of the events hosted by the government to help the elderly on the digital inclusion is the is the Tech Force 19 challenge. And there is a total of 18 digital solutions which has been rewarded 200, sorry, excuse me, 25,000 pounds to assist the development of the project. And so after all these case studies, so what can we conclude from the about three cases? And so we conclude that each country has its own strength and weakness regarding the education of technology resources. But we can't deny that it is more or less biased to a specific age group. And so that it comes the question, so should the government pay more effort on the digital inclusion? Should resources be allocated more evenly? And if so, what is the role of the teenagers on this whole issue? And so feel free to raise your, your thoughts and comments on this issue. And I will now pass the time to Jason for our discussion. Thank you. OK, so thank you, Anthony. Uh, hi guys, I'm Jason. So uh, we have a poll right now and we'd like uh, to know about how do you think towards this question and you could vote on uh, which 
would be a better way to distribute the technological resource. And you guys could scan on the QR code, and we then you can know about uh, the polling results. And uh, we'll leave some time for you guys to uh, think about the issue as well. And uh, yep, we'll proceed when we have enough votes. Maybe we can wait for like two minutes to see if. Um, yep, you could wait for a while and let others to scan the QR code and to uh, think about the question and think about the issue. Uh, which should which sites should we actually focus on uh, to re allocate a resource? Because in a society, there are different stakeholders, and well, obviously teenagers are one of the stakeholders. And which site should we focus on more? And which site and we should uh, justify why and yep. And so after calling, uh, I'll then go through you guys to the discussion session.